As a student here at UA Little Rock, I have been encouraged to grow not only as a person, but as a student. This has helped me prepare myself to enter the workforce as I graduate. You're gonna hear some information about a lot of different high impact programs that we offer here at UA Little Rock and how they've helped students just like me prepare themselves for their own careers. In our school, we try to bridge the theory practice divide to give our students an opportunity to engage with uh, public agencies, nonprofits, to try and create a more just and equitable society. But in the social entrepreneurship class, uh, our graduate students uh, apply entrepreneurial principles to addressing local problems. So, for example, in my class right now, uh, I've got three teams of graduate students working on areas of interest in Little Rock. For instance, I have a team working on addressing food insecurity, a team working on addressing uh, childcare, access to childcare, and another team working on accessing broadband in our state. So many of our GAs actually uh, are placed at um, state agencies and or local nonprofits. Um, what's interesting about our GA ships that they're not just uh, you know, one-off projects. Many of our GAs actually go on to uh, full-time jobs with the agencies or nonprofits they're placed in. That's a testament to how the program operates. Uh, you know, our call really is to bridge that theory and practice divide, right? To provide the theoretical and conceptual knowledge in class, but then to also take that and have folks apply it in the real world. So they take our classes and then they go out and work with these nonprofits on issues that are important to nonprofits and or state agencies. And we're seeing a lot more students interested in issues of social justice and equity. So as a faculty, uh, in order to be more in tune with what our students want, we don't have a choice but to uh, adapt to that, right? So uh, we integrate elements of equity. Equity uh, is a pillar. Of, of, of public affairs so our students get those elements, those tenets of equity in our classes. And that, you know, I think is a, a real um, benefit for, for our folks as, as they graduate that they can, you know, take what they've learned in our class, uh, realize its real world implications, that it is affecting someone outside of the classroom. And by having that equity lens, they're then able to make uh, decisions that benefit you know, their local community and hopefully benefit the state. I want to be able to make a difference in society. I want um, the students who are part of my program to make a difference in their community and society. And we have some really cool superpowers as, as academics, right? Like, we study this stuff, we're engaged in our field, so it's great to be able to use you know, my superpowers for something good and to share those superpowers with, with our students so that they can then go on and do something good in their community. The School of Social Work is a very high impact program. One of the ways that we prepare our students um, for post-grad employment is that we have internships. So we have field placements that are actually part of their core coursework. In my management and community practice class, we do what is called a community-based action project where instead of, you know, learning the material in class and taking a quiz or a test over it, we actually send them out um, in the field to partner with a local um, organization or agency. We complete a community-based action project where they partner with this agency and a lot of times the agency will say, will come to you know, to us and say, we're having, you know, this issue or we would like to be better in this area, but we don't quite know how to facilitate that change. And so my social work students um, practice their social work problem solving skills, which are you know, engage, assess, intervene, evaluate, terminate, and they go in and they're able to meet with leadership and these organizations and kind of pinpoint things that maybe could be um, done differently. It's, it's a really cool way for them to just get this really professionalized, hands-on experience and, and practice working in a team, practice working with a group. One of the most important things when we engage in the community-based action project, even though in some classes you'll have deadlines for things, it was more important for us to gain the hands-on experience and knowledge versus just turning in a paper. She wanted to make sure that we were actually understanding what we were doing and creating those relationships and that's really important for someone to like 
not be so set on a deadline, but more, be more focused on the work that you're actually doing with the organization. The social work program has really changed my mind on how we create change in society and how to get change done in order to create change for individuals in the long run. I have been teaching the Information Systems Development Project course for three semesters. It is a required capstone class. This course attempts to simulate the real-world experience as closely as possible. It is designed to engage the students in real-world learning and prepare them for transition to industry. This was my uh, second capstone project. This one was very extensive. I really loved it because it gave us real-world experience, as if the student is whether ready or not for the professional experience. As the instructor, I played the role of the CEO, monitoring their progress and giving them guidance and the technical support when needed. At the beginning of the semester, each team must write and sign a statement of work with the client and make a project plan. Then they need to carry out the roadmap from start to finish. In the end of the semester, the students need to submit a final report and give a presentation to business professionals. The students are exposed to many challenges and issues in real-life IT projects. For example, the project might not be fully or very well defined initially. They know they have to be highly motivated and work proactively. They learn how to engage the client. They learn how to solve issues quickly and effectively with teamwork. They learn how to communicate among team members and support and help each other to accomplish the common goal. The students deepen and refine the technical skills. More important, they learn a lot of soft skills that they are not able to learn from textbooks. I encourage my students to make this capstone project a shining point on the resume as they work to get a job. Our clients benefit from the project as well. For example, one student team helped the city of Little Rock find more than 3,000 unlicensed businesses, which could potentially generate an additional revenue of more than $1 million per year. Another team helped our UA Little Rock baseball team implement baseball analytics using Power BI. Moreover, these two projects were accepted by the Southwest Decision Science Institute for conference presentation. Again, I'm so proud of and appreciate our students for their strong motivation, hard work, capability, accomplishments, and the contribution they made to our community. One of the things that's nice about being at UA Little Rock um, and being in the Department of Art Design here in the Wingate Center of Art Plus Design is we've had this facility designed by faculty you know, with the assistance of architects and engineers. But what we've been able to do is create this sense of a private art school experience at the cost of a public school education. That's one of our high impact uh, opportunities. Another one is we have a fully funded uh, study abroad program. It provides opportunities to, for students to travel all over the world. Our last trip was to Berlin. Uh, previous to that, it was Ireland and then England. And one of the things that we like to do with these is um, combine art history and a discipline. So we'll have these run by both a faculty member in art history and then also in the studio arts. I think it's important to know that when our students come in here and they work with our faculty, we will do everything we can to guide them to a career um, in the arts and in art education, for example, um, these students go out and they get a job right away. In fact, a lot of students in art education are being contacted before they graduated. My name is Remy Fields and I am a junior here at UALR and I am in the art education program. I always knew I wanted to help my community in a way, and I really felt the way to do that was through art. I want to teach high school students, so ninth grade through 12th grade. 
that's when students start thinking about what, what are they going to do outside of high school. Um, that's where we can you know, start discussing that and start discussing different career options as well as uh, pursue art on a higher level. I, th I think the biggest thing that we need to think about with an education in the arts is on the outside it looks like we're making art, that it's hand skills and we're making aesthetically pleasing objects. But in the end, what we're doing is we're teaching students how to problem solve. And in our case, it's visual, but that's a skill that can be translated across the uh, spectrum of, of work. So we have two degree programs in our department, the construction management program and then the civil and construction engineering. Typically, when you think of construction management and engineering, you think of men, and obviously we're two women standing here. So women are definitely getting into the field more, um, usually about 20%. Um, in the department as far as students. Um, do you see a lot of women in the field? There is a lot more women coming into the field and a lot more uh, of our general contractors are having a lot more women in management roles actually. Our senior design project for um, the civil and construction engineering partners with a structural firm to um, make a senior design project. You culminate your entire curriculum into a project where you design a building and you meet weekly or bi-weekly with these firms and they provide guidance for the students and really run the show. I kind of am in the background at some points. Just helping the students along so that they know what they're getting to when they get out in the real world. As part of our program we also require students to get 800 hours worth of work. Many students go out into the community. We have a lot of partners in the community, um, construction industry, and um, this is one of our students, Jenna Manis, who has been working um, with UAMS, and she's here to tell you about her senior capstone project. So currently for the senior project, I'll be renovating the space that we're standing in here. Um, the point of the project is to help design a space, renovate a space, and then meet with the end user to create a schedule and um, get a cost estimate together for them and show them what the space might look like after the project is complete. For project management on this project, I'll pretty much be planning it from start to finish and in my work experience I do more of the uh, construction half of it so I'm not really involved in the planning. So in this I'll be learning more about the planning process. Um, one of the big things in our department was we just opened the Building Information Modeling Lab, which is BIM, which is a visualization tool to help in coordination of projects. You know, you're able to go visualize the actual space and um, that's something that we're, our department is starting to focus on is that new technology and so that students get it in the classroom and then can go use it on their, know how to use it when they go out in the real world for their jobs. My name is Thomas Wallace. I'm the program coordinator for the BA in Web Design and Development. Uh, this is an interdisciplinary program that covers web programming, uh, graphic design, uh, multimedia, and content creation, along with topics such as uh, user experience and user interface development and usability testing. Most of our students are going on to be gainfully employed in the industry, and so we're real, real pleased with that. We've made a lot of effort over the years to uh, build a very interactive curriculum that uh, provides students with a lot of hands-on applied learning experiences, both as individuals but also working in teams. We take a very holistic approach to the process. Uh, we're not just trying to equip students with technical skills, but at, add a communication component and a project management component to that so they can go out and really work. Uh, they're ready to work right when they walk off campus. I think it was like my freshman year I took web technologies and it was sort of something that I've never seen before. I've never experienced the fluidity of it before. You know, developers and programmers and everybody coming together and getting to talk about things. To be able to experience the artsy side of things as well. So it sort of hit all of my checkpoints whenever I, you know, for what I want to do after I graduate. I have a lot of different options. It's a choose your own adventure type degree and it's very hands-on in the way that we advise our students and I would say that if we talked to 20 graduates they would all have an experience that's customized to really their uh, interests and, and goals and so I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of that. It, this, this was the program that I didn't have as, as, as an undergraduate and um, 
we've had a lot of success with it and I hope we continue to have success with it. I'm Dr. Erin Finzer. I'm an Associate Vice Chancellor in the Office of the Provost and I'm going to talk to you about some curricular initiatives that we have going on right now to better support working and adult learners during the age of COVID. And the first is an expanded prior learning credit policy and with this policy we will be able to build databases where students can see how they can earn academic credit from us for certain licensures, certifications, and workforce development initiatives that are taking place locally. The second way that this prior learning credit can work is that students can bring to us a portfolio or complete a test that shows that they have the skills or the competencies of certain courses. Another curricular initiative is our Associates in General Studies degree. The faculty are working right now on creating stackable credential pathways within our Associates so that a student can earn a certificate on their way to achieving an Associates degree. These certificates are going to be built to include upper level credit hours so that the student has um, buy-in into the, the major and will want to come back and complete the four-year degree as well. Um, and also some work-based learning, so either an apprenticeship, an internship, or some kind of prior learning credit based on, on learning that's been done in the workplace. And so far as both of these initiatives have a lot of workforce development, workplace learning built into them, they're going to give us a lot of opportunities to partner with local businesses, um, industry leaders, and to work with employers to get their employees who have some college back into college with us and on their way towards obtaining credentials and degrees. It's great for a working student um, to be able to come to us, say, pick up some credits and go back to their employer and say, I have these skills now. So we feel like this, this associate's degree will really distinguish UA Little Rock and help us be competitive in the post-COVID environment when students are going to need to work to fund their education and we'll need flexible ways to come in and out of the, of the higher education system.